From my home to yours, God bless you. If you could use some prayer, please post your prayer requests in the comment section, and we would be honored to pray for you. Today we're wrapping up a series of messages based on the new book, They Walked with God. And we're looking at surprising story of God, stories of God's grace. Today, I want us to take special note of the woman with the checkered past. Her name is Rahab, and her story occupies the second chapter of Joshua. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent men from the Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go and view the land, especially Jericho. And so they went, and they came to the house of a harlot named Rahab, and they lodged there. You see, the time had come for the Hebrew people to enter the promised land. Jericho, a formidable town that sat north of the Dead Sea, was their first challenge. Canaanites indwelled the city. Now, to call the people barbaric is to describe the North Pole as nippy. These people turned temple worship into orgies. They buried babies alive. The people of Jericho had no regard for human life or respect for God. It was into this city that the two spies of Joshua crept, and it was in this city that the spies met Rahab the harlot. Much could be said about Rahab without mentioning her profession. She was a Canaanite. She provided cover for the spies. As she came to believe in the God of Abraham before she ever met the children of Abraham. She was spared in the destruction of her city. She was grafted into the Hebrew culture. She married a contemporary of Joshua's. She bore a son named Boaz. She had a great-grandson named Jesse, a great-great-grandson named David, and a descendant named Jesus. Yes, Rahab's name appears on the family tree of the Son of God. Her resume needn't mention her profession. Yet in five of the eight appearances of her name in Scripture, she is presented as a harlot. Five. Wouldn't one suffice? And wouldn't that one reference be nuanced in a euphemism such as Rahab, the best hostess in Jericho, or Rahab, who made everyone feel welcome? It's bad enough that the name Rahab sounds like rehab. Disguise her career choice. Veil it. Mask it. Put a little concealer on this biblical blemish. Drop the reference to the brothel, please. But the Bible doesn't. <laughs> Just the opposite. It points a neon sign at it. It's even attached to her name in the book of Hebrews, in the Hall of Fame. The list includes Abel, Abraham, Noah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and then all of a sudden, the harlot Rahab. Chapter 11. 31. No asterisk, no footnote, no apology. Her history of harlotry is part of her testimony. Her story begins like this. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. Joshua 2 and verse 2. The king could see the multitude of Hebrews camped on Jordan's eastern banks. As Rahab would later disclose, the people of Jericho were scared. Word on the street was that God had his hand on the newcomers. And woe be unto anyone who got in their way. And when the king heard that the spies were hiding at Rahab's house, he sent soldiers to fetch them. I'm seeing half a dozen men squeeze down the narrow cobblestoned path in the red light district. It's late at night. The torch lit taverns are open. The patrons are a few sheets to the wind. They yell obscenities at the king's men, but the soldiers, they don't react. The guards keep walking, raised, laser focused, until they stand before the wooden door of a stone building that abuts the famous Jericho walls. 
The lantern is lit, unlit, leaving the soldiers to wonder if anyone is home. The captain pounds the door. There's a shuffling inside, and Rahab answers. Sorry, boys, we're booked for the night. <laughs> we aren't here for that, the captain says. We're here for the Hebrews. Hebrews? She cocks her head. Huh. I thought you were here for fun. We came for the spies. Where are they? And she steps out onto the porch and she looks to the right and she looks to the left and she lowers her voice to a whisper and she says, you just missed them. You just missed them. They snuck out before the gates were shut. If you get a move on, you can catch them. The king's men turn and run. As they disappear around the corner, Rahab hurries up the brothel stairs to the roof where the two spies have been hiding. She tells them that the coast is clear. Her words must have stunned the spies. They never expected to find courage in Jericho. They never expected to find faith in a brothel. But they found both. Jericho's shady lady said to them, I know the Lord has given you the land. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea and what you did to the two kings who were on the other side of the Jordan. The Lord your God, he is God in heaven, above and on the earth beneath. That's 9 through 11. Rahab found God, or better worded, God found Rahab. He spotted a tender heart in the hard city, and he reached out to save her. I think he would have saved the whole city, but no one else made the request. Then again, Rahab had an advantage over the other people. You know, she had nothing to lose. Maybe that's where you are as well. Maybe, maybe you've sold out. We all have. We've all prostituted ourselves, right? We've all caved in. We've all compromised. And maybe you're thinking, I'm too soiled, too dirty, too afflicted. I've sinned too much, stumbled too often, floundered too long. I'm on the garbage heap of society. No hope for me, no grace for me. God's one word reply for such doubt, Rahab, Rahab. Lest we think God's promised land is a promise given to a chosen few, he positions her story in the front of the book of Joshua. Look at this. The narrator gives her an entire chapter for heaven's sake. She gets more inches of type than do the priests, the spies, or Joshua's right-hand men. If quantity and chronologic chronology mean anything in theology, then Rahab's headline position announces this. God has a place for the Rahabs of the world. The Hebrew spies, as it turns out, were really missionaries. They thought they were on a reconnaissance trip, but they weren't. God needed no scouting report. His plan was to collapse the city walls like a stack of dominoes. He didn't send the men to collect data. He sent the spies to reach Rahab. They told her to bind a line of scarlet cord in the window so that they could identify her house. And without hesitation, she, she bound that scarlet cord in the window and the spies escaped and Rahab made preparation. She told her family to get ready. She kept an eye out for the coming army. She checked the cord to make sure it was tied securely and dangling from the window. And when the Hebrews came and when the walls fell and when everyone else perished, Rahab and her family were saved. The scripture says, By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish. Hebrews 11.31 Her profession of faith mattered more than her profession as a harlot. Maybe your past is a checkered one. Maybe your peers don't share your faith. Maybe your pedigree is one of violence. Your ancestry is one of rebellion. If so, then Rahab is your model. Now, we don't drop scarlet cords from our windows, but we trust the crimson thread of the blood of Christ. 
We don't prepare for the coming of the Hebrews, but boy, we do live with an eye toward the second coming of our Joshua, Jesus Christ. Ultimately, we will all see that our mess will become music and God will have a heaven full of people who have been purchased by the blood of Christ. And we will all know the song Amazing Grace by heart. Maybe you'll sing it standing right next to Rahab.